On New Year's Day of 2019, the New Horizons spacecraft made a historic flyby of the celestial object 2014 MU69, or also called Ultima Thule. Now in this video, we're going to go a basic overview of the New Horizons mission, what exactly Ultima Thule is in our solar system, and what makes this flyby so unique to planetary science. So let's talk about that. So before we discuss some of the exciting things that happened in the Ultima Thule flyby, we first have to go back in time to 2002. During this time frame, NASA was starting to announce a new concept called the New Frontiers program. And New Frontiers is trying to understand or explore new parts of the solar system, either places we had never been before, or we might have visited in the past but have better instruments to study now. And one of the very first missions with this New Frontiers program was called New Horizons. New Horizons would launch in 2006 from Cape Canaveral and would start its nine year voyage to its main destination being Pluto. Now if you follow planetary science or have over the last few years, you probably know about this flyby because this was a big upgrade for planetary science because we had no idea what the dwarf planet Pluto looked like or to some extent it was just a few pixels and then we had very high resolution pictures of the dwarf planet reaching its closest approach to 12,000 or a little over 12,000 kilometers above the surface which is pretty incredible. We also learned a lot about its largest moon Charon and just the overall Pluto system. So that in itself was very impressive, but that wasn't the end of the mission. After it flew by Pluto, they still had some fuel left and they actually intended to visit two more objects beyond Pluto or in the Kuiper belt. Now, if you want to learn more about the Pluto flyby, let me know in the comments below, but I'm going to continue talking about what exactly Ultima Thule is and what the Kuiper belt includes. So one of the first questions you may have is Ultima Thule a planet or even a dwarf planet? It. And the quick answer to that is no. Ultima Thule is way too small and the gravitational effect that it has on itself isn't enough to make it a sphere. Therefore, it's nowhere near the size of what we need for a planet or a dwarf planet. So if it's not a planet or a dwarf planet, well, is it a comet? And it's actually not a comet. You see, comets are usually developed in some of the outer regions of the solar system, but then when their orbits get closer to the sun, the heat sublimates some of the gas on the surface, which usually creates this tail or this coma around it. And that's usually what we see when we talk about comets. However, Ultima Thule stays at a very far distance away from the sun. So then if it's not a planet, a dwarf planet, or a comet, is it an asteroid? And kind of. Asteroid is a very loose term when it comes into planetary science. Basically, any rock that's small enough can be considered an asteroid. And a lot of the time, asteroids are usually considered to be things that are closer to the sun, you know, approximately around the area of the asteroid belt, maybe around Jupiter or so, but this object is much farther away. In fact, a much better classification of it is called a planetesimal. And this is mainly because planetesimals, as you could probably get from the name, are what would eventually make up a planet if you got enough of them. And since it's at such a far distance away from the sun, we think that this could be something that represents what could have existed at the very early stages of our solar system. But let me wait before I get to that. There's a little bit more classification we have to do. But one major way we can classify it is by its orbit. Luckily, when we did the flyby, it was a little bit over six and a half billion kilometers away from the sun. And it stays at this pretty far distance throughout its entire orbit. In fact, it's always further than Neptune, meaning its gravitational effect doesn't really play that much of a difference. And it stays in a pretty stable area. Therefore, it's called a trans-Neptunian object, or more specifically, because it's pretty stable, it's a cold classical Kuiper belt object. Now the fact that it's cold, yes it is very cold because it's that far away from the sun, but the term cold actually means its dynamic resonance or how much it changes over time. So now that we know that Ultima Thule is a Kuiper belt object, we also know that it's very far away from the sun. But here's a quick fun fact. The farther away from the sun you are, the longer it takes for you to complete one orbit. For example, Earth takes one year to complete an orbit around the sun, and Mars takes longer than an Earth year, it has its own 
one Mars year, which is about one and a half Earth years. Then if we continue going out to Jupiter and Saturn, all the way out to Ultima Thule, it takes longer and longer. In fact, it takes Ultima Thule 298 Earth years to complete one orbit around the Sun. And since it was discovered in 2014, that means its first official anniversary of completing an orbit will be in the year 2312. So that just puts into perspective how far away this object really is. So now that we've discussed some of the background of New Horizons, some of the classifications of Ultima Thule, and some fun facts about its orbit, let's quickly discuss what we've learned so far about the flyby. Now, as I mentioned, the flyby took place on January 1st, and all the scientific data that could possibly happen took place in a few hour time frame, and all of that information is currently stored on board New Horizons. However, just a few days after the actual flyby, the Earth would align with the Sun such that they wouldn't be able to directly send information back until actually January 11th. So now they're going to start receiving more scientific data regarding the actual event. And they've said that the data rate's going to take so long that it will take over the next 20 months to get all the information back from the actual flyby itself. Therefore, there will be a lot of new and exciting images and data to come over the next couple years. But the main thing I want to talk about are the very first images that they received. As you see now is the very first one they actually got back. They also had color variations to give them an idea of what the color of the object would look like. You can also see right now is that it's about 31 kilometers in length and it has these two lobed shapes. They were also determined how long it actually rotates, being around once every 15 hours or so. And scientists were kind of interested by the fact that it was so red. They actually predicted that somewhat before they got there. However, the overall idea relates back to what they saw in the pluto Charon system. They aren't sure if this happens to be very cold organic molecules on the surface or if it's a different cold gas. But there's going to be more information of that to come. So I'm very interested to see why it's red. There have already been various studies showing different hills or topographic features on the surface, but again, it's not that high resolution, so they don't know for sure what exactly it looks like. But the biggest thing that people have been able to notice is it looks double lobed. In fact, it looks like two spheres that have kind of been merged together. Now this strange bilobed shape is actually a contact binary, and this forms when you have two rocks or small objects in space that are orbiting one another in a binary-like system, and then eventually they just collide, but not with a lot of energy, but rather just slowly losing enough energy so that when they eventually contact, they just stay together. Now the New Horizons spacecraft isn't the first one to visit a contact binary. In fact, the European Space Agency's Rosetta mission and JAXA's Hayabusa mission both went to contact binaries, one being a comet and the other being an asteroid. But this just goes to show how common these are in our solar system. Now some of the things that make Ultima Thule so unique is the fact that as of right now it is now the farthest object we've ever flown by as a species, which is pretty incredible. But also also just the fact that it is so well preserved. It's such a great representation of a contact binary. It's in such a stable orbit that it's thought to basically have remained that way for four and a half billion years. And all this information and everything we come to learn about Ultima Thule over the next two years will help us understand a lot more about some of the very earliest objects that existed in our solar system. Now I want to be able to appreciate just how challenging this flyby was from an engineering and scientific standpoint. Just imagine, it was six and a half billion kilometers away and the object was only 31 kilometers in length. Imagine just trying to find that. If it was a large planet like Jupiter or Saturn, it would be much easier because the gravity would be pulling us in and it would just be much brighter. However, it wasn't. It was a very small planetesimal at a very far distance away from the sun. So that raises a lot of questions like, how exactly did we spot this object? And if we were able to do it once, could we do it again? Those are some questions we're gonna answer in the next video. So if you enjoyed this, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions about Ultima Thule or the New Horizon spacecraft, let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.